Hello everybody, welcome to the second part of the Wing Stubby workshop. At the first part we talked about the basics of the Wing Stubby. And this part it's all about Wing Stubby Easy Control. I will show you the settings step by step and also what's important. So have fun! Okay, so what do you get if you buy the Wing Stubby Easy Control system? You get the Wing Stubby for itself, you also get the cool stickers, the quick start guide and the teach in black. If you buy the classic Wing Stubby, it's also no problem. You get the Wing Stubby, you get the PC interface and the instruction manual. In the next step, I will show you how you make the Wing Stubby classic system within one click to the Wing Stubby Easy Control and we will also look how you get the teach in without any software. So the first step is to get all the servo connectors in the right part of your Wing Stubby. If you have not enough space to get to your battery data port, it's useful to put the servo extension lead at it to plug in the PC interface or the teach in plug or the Bluetooth module. It's possible to run Wing Stubby Easy Control without any software. But to get the full performance out of it, I advise you to download Multiplex Launcher on the Multiplex website. You will find the Multiplex Launcher at the Multiplex website at Service, Downloads and Software. So did you download it and update it Multiplex Launcher and you are an owner of a Wingstubby Classic system? I will show you how to make Wingstubby Easy Control out of it. So at first you have to connect your PC USB interface with the battery data port of your Wingstubby. You have also to connect your Wingstubby with a battery pack. Now the Multiplex launcher knows automatically that you have connected a Wingstubby to the launcher. Now we have to click to manual. Attention! Now we have to get sure that your electric drive this could not start to run, because your servo output is now activated. Now you have to click firmware update and then change firmware type. Now you can switch your Wingstabby Classic system to Easy Control and then install the final firmware version 1.0.9. If your update was successful, Wingstabby will be rebooting and after this you have your Easy Control user interface. So which steps are now necessary to get Wingstub Easy Control started? First step is to do the programming at your transmitter for your model like you used it before. That's what I did already with the Funk Hub. If you use dual rate, please switch to the high rates. If you use mixers, you have to deactivate them. But Delta mixers or retail mixers are allowed. So how does the teach-in process going on in detail? You have two possibilities. You can use your teach-in block and connect it with your MSB port at your Wing Stubby or the second possibility is to use your Multiplex Launcher. Here you have to click to the Start Teach-in Process button. But notice, before you starting the teach-in process, you have, to, you have to select a free proportional channel on your transmitter for the gain like a slider or something else. No switch, a slider. After starting the teach-in process, Wing Stubby is searching for the RC connection. The first step is to teach in the gain. In my case, channel 8. Here you should move your slider. Here it's important to move your slider to the maximum endpoint. The second step is to move your aileron sticks right. If Wing Stubby recognize the right channels, the ailerons will make a short twitch. After this, you have to, to move the aileron stick to the left point. After this comes elevator down, then elevator up. Here it's always important to stay at the maximum endpoints with your sticks until Wingstubby wants the next step. The last thing is to move the rudder stick to the right and then to the left and after these 8 steps your wing stubby teach in process is completed.
Of course, you can also do the teaching process direct on the airfield without a computer. Here you have to connect your teach in block with your MSB port at your wing stubby and then switch the wing stubby on. Now there will be no difference anymore between the teach in process with the launcher. At first wing stubby searches for the RC connection. Then wing stubby answers with the fast flashing of the LED. Here you have to count the number of the flashes of the LED. And then you have to compare it with your teach in card. After you have made the 8 steps, your teach in process is also completed. Now we go step by step through the single functions of Wingstubby Easy Control. Let's start with the receiver. In my case, I have the standard SRXL receiver type, I can change this, and I have the M Link standard telemetry. If I want, I could deactivate the telemetry. Here, I can also set the different sensor addresses for the different parameters. Let's go to the servos. Here you can select your right servo frequency. Which frequency is the right one you should look up in your servo instruction manual. The next function is called sensor. This is a really important function. If your installation position of your wing stubby differs to the position at your launcher, you have to switch the selection in your launcher until it fits to the real position in your aircraft. If your installation position is correct, but the direction of the wing stubby is switched about 180 degrees, you have to go to the extended menu and switch the directions for the aileron and the elevator, but not for the rudder. After this, you have to save your modifications with the red flashing button. It's really important to do a pre-flight check if your wing stubby is working correctly. How that's going on, I will show you at the end after the explanation. Let's go to the gyro modes. Wing stubby easy control has two modes. In the standard settings, mode 1 is the damping mode and mode 2 is heading hold. Like I already said, heading hold has an influence on the flight feeling that's the reason I prefer the damping mode. All two modes have a free configuration. So what are the adjustments I can do? I can deactivate the gyro in each of two modes. I can set the damping mode or I can set the heading hold mode. It's also possible to put an offset for the gain. So what does that mean? Imagine, not every rudder has the same size or the same sensitivity. In example of my fun cup, the ailerons are the biggest, the elevator is a little bit smaller and the rudder is the smallest one. A good start value for the offset, and I have to say that I even did not fly the fun cup, is when I start with the elevator with an offset from 4 and the rudder with an offset from 8. At this point I can only speak for myself, but I think the damping mode is the best mode for 98% of all wing aircrafts. Exceptions of this advice are models like 3D jets, which I will explain in a later tutorial. I even also don't like it if the gyro has an effect on the elevator when I want to land. That's why my standard configuration is to make mode 2 like mode 1, with the only difference that I deactivate the elevator on mode 2. For the gain offsets, I start at the same values at mode 2 like mode 1. I can give you the advice to do a little bit testing at the values and you will find your setting that's right for you. But there are more possibilities on Ring Stubby Easy Control. If you look to the right upper corner of your launcher, you will find the extended options. Here you will see a great advantage of Wing Stubby Easy Control. So what is the gyro fading out? The fading out is a possibility to let the sensitivity fade out at high rates, for example of your aileron or your rudder or also elevator. 
And that's a really good thing if you want to fly maneuvers like snap rolls or something like that. That means the more the rates of your rudder are rising, the less the sensitivity of the gyro gets. In this example of the ailerons, the gyro has no effect anymore on your full rates. For me, the default value of the gyro fade out 200 is perfect, but you can also change it if you want. Just go to the gyro modes, then to the extended options and you will see you have a slider. So let's switch to the two left parameters of Wingstar Easy Control, the P rate and the D rate. I will show you at some easy examples how the interaction of the offset, the P rate and the D rate has an influence. So case one, imagine your gyro control of your different steering functions are very different. For example, you will feel the gyro control very much on the ailerons and in rudder you need much more. Here the right step is to adapt the offset values of your gain. Do that in small steps, you will get your right setting. Case 2. Imagine the locking or the stopping in a 4 point roll is much too strong, so that it looks very unnatural. Here the right step is to increase the D rate from the standard value 10 to 20. And then do one more test flight, but make the values not too high. Case 3. Here one steering function is swinging up very fast, that means the amplitude is much too high here. You will feel that when your affected rudder in flight is shaking up and down very fast. Here the reason is to increase the D rate from 10 to 20. Make sure to increase it in 5 steps, that means from 10 to 15 and then from 15 to 20, if 15 was not enough. In addition to this, please also decrease the P rate. The offset, the P rate and the D rate values are useful to get the maximum out of your system. So your wing step is perfect match to your aircraft. For my fun cup, I set the offset like already described. The D rates remained at the values 15 for aileron, 12 for elevator and 10 for rudder. With these values, I will go for maiden flight. If you want to copy the values from mode 1 to mode 2, just do it easy by drag and drop. In my case, I deactivate the elevator at the mode 2 for landings like I already described it. If all values are transferred to wing stubby with a click on the flashing button, we are finished and go to the airfield and fly around. Let's get to the home straight of our wing stubby workshop. Sure you will ask yourself, did I make everything correctly? If you can answer the following 4 points with yes, you are on the safe side. Point 1. Is your wing stubby installed fixed in your aircraft so that it don't can become loose during flight? This is very important. Point 2. Are your linkages for your rudders free of clearance? This is important that the wing stubby can work correctly. Point 3. Is your slider for gain set it correctly? And point 4. Are your effective directions of your wing stubby set it correctly? We will look at these points directly at the aircraft. If you want to test the function of your proportional slider, so set it to the center position. This will also be the start point for your first test flight. Now the LED has to shine orange. That means the wing stubby is completely deactivated. If you are moving the slider in one direction, the color of the LED will turn into green. That means we are now in mode 1. If you slide to the other side, the color of the LED gets red, so now we are in mode 2. If this is the case, your slider is working correctly. So let's get to the last point, the check of the effective directions of your wing stubby. This is the really most important point to check before test flight. Like I already said, the in-wing stubby compensates the bad influences like wind. That means, when I move the tail to the right side, the plane is turning to the left and you see that the wing stubby works against this movement to the left by pulling the rudder to the right side. In case of the elevator, the elevator has to move to the upside 
when we move the nose down to the ground. Let's check the ailerons. If I move the wing to the right side, the right aileron has to move down to control it to the opposite, to the left. So if the check of your effective directions was successful, you are now ready for the first flight with your wing stubby easy control. So what are your steps now? You start with your slider for the gain in the center position, that means wing stubby deactivated. Then you can start, if necessary, do the trimming and then you can begin to move your slider in one of the two directions, very slowly. So now we are finished with the second part of the Wings Dubby workshop. Now you know everything what's important to know about Wings Dubby Easy Control. If you pay attention to these steps, nothing could go wrong anymore. I really hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, leave a like and watch the third part of the Wings Dubby workshop.